In this tutorial, we'll take a look at the fluid simulator. And it's powerful, and it generates really nice effects. Now, this is an animation I put together a couple of years ago, and I generally don't use fluids too much because they're, well, they're kind of slow, <laughs> you know? And so unless you have a job where somebody's paying you a lot of money to do some type of animation effect, for me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to allocate all my time doing fluids. But in the future, maybe when it's all GPU-based, then uh, I'll reconsider it. But I'll show you how to do it just to set it up because they are pretty cool anyway. So basically, this is pre-calculated. Let's see if I can run this real quick. So I basically have baked the fluid into the scene. All right, it's running for basically almost four seconds here, like this. And there's just really two objects. It's kind of like the smoke simulator, where you have a domain object. Well, the fluid simulator is the same way. I have a cube specified as a domain object, and then I have this circle over here that's specified for the inflow into the cube. And it has to be within the bounds of there. In fact, let's go take a look at it in wireframe mode, like this. And you can see that there's the, there's the circle. It's really a cylinder, so it's got a face to it, like that. Here's the face, like that. It's got all those faces, and then the cube is the domain. And see it baked. Well, I can't even see the boundaries because it's baked. But there it is. It's on the inside of the cube when I set the cube like that. So the cube. So over here, this is a fluid. I basically selected the fluid from the physics button, and it's set as inflow from these types, like that. And then I gave it a velocity in the x direction because this is where it is pointing and so I want the water to come out this particular direction and then you can change the volume initialization I do it from a shell in this case alright so and then this object is your domain again he's set as a fluid within the physics button and you can change the render types depending upon your speed of your computer so the final render is um, much greater detail and we'll maybe render a frame and then your start time in frame 0 seconds to 4 seconds is where I'm running the simulation and then you can specify a directory where you want your files to go is let me see if I can find that down here when I ran that simulation in my temp directory I have all these files that have been loaded into here that it built for the simulation all right, so you want to make sure you specify somewhere where you want those to go. And what I just pressed before I started the animation, I pressed bake. And baked it, and it took, and then you had your, you'll have your line come across the top. I'm not going to press it again right now, but line came across the top. And even this sim simple simulation took about, oh, oh, 12 minutes just to bake this simulation. I mean, it does look pretty nice. You can see the water's flowing in pretty cool, and it has some pretty nice realistic effects like that. So let's see what it looks like rendered. If I have ray tracing set, I should on here. Yeah, there's ray tracing set on that. And let me show you the settings I have on here. I have several lights in the scene to help make it work. This is a point light, sunlight, point light, point light, right? Then we have the plane. Let's see what it's set. Just a basic plane. Half looks like default settings on there. But then the, this is the important por portion of it is that I have this set in here, just regular surface rendering, transparency, alpha is way down, so it's quite transparent. It still has some shininess to it. And I've made sure ray tracing is set instead of Z transparency. Otherwise, you're not going to get the effect. Let's ray trace it real quick. Let's see if the camera's still pointing at it. Okay, there it is in there. Let's look at an earlier frame. And it looks pretty good. You know, you got to have, if I ray trace it though, I mean, if I use Z transparency, you don't have that same pop that you would get when you ray trace it. And even though that's fairly quick to ray trace, that's not bad. It's really the simulation setup is what takes place. Now, this is similar to the smoke simulation that we looked at in a, another tutorial, is that you can put objects within the domain of this cube when you build it and then your water will collide with those objects as well. And it does a great job. I mean, it's, these guys, they're, they're geniuses over there who write all this code. Oh, they are. They're really cool. All right. Well, that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you in the next lesson.